if it's meant to be, then it will, God willing, God willing. Sky's the limit and I'm busting out the ceiling. Bust out the ceiling. Yeah. It's starting to get to the point where I don't catch feeling. Nah, 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 nah. It's counting these millions, it's counting these millions. Oh. I'm eating honey to show. If you can pay it's enough, I will never sell my soul. All I need is good vibes. So I don't trust these hoes. Hot in love smart bros. That's just how the game goes. Came a long way, get it straight. They want the food in my face. They don't want to see me strong. What's going on? What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Get ready for another episode of Unpopular Opinion. I'm your host, Grand Hefe. Joined as always by my co-host, OG Raw. How you doing today, bro? Oh, man. It's a good morning. Last night was not a good night, though. I had to go to bed with that Lakers lost on my mind. Yeah, hey, uh, it's tough. It's tough. Can I vent today? Can yeah, go ahead and vent. You know what? Let's go ahead and kick it off. Like, why, why you on that Lakers? Go ahead and vent. One and three cents, Man, LeBron. What's going on? Let me just tell you, the baby Lakers once again in the full quarter. And quite frankly, I'm sick of it. And I need to vent on here because I can't vent to nobody here, especially about, about sports, because no one else cares here other than me. But I had to go to sleep with that loss in my mind. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to wake up, try to have a great day. And I, I woke up. I, I feel like we're going to have a great show today. So, But let me just start off with Lonzo Ball. He played horrible. He was one of the keys to that loss that we had yesterday against the Oklahoma City Thunder. This man played 35 minutes, Grant Hatton. Guess how many points he had? A grand total of three. Three points. <laughs> Three points, four rebounds, seven assists. I do not care. He does not get a pass anymore. This is not his rookie year. This performance, like, this guy really had an opportunity to go at Russell Westbrook because Russell Westbrook was having a horrible shooting night. He's been in the slump for the past few weeks, for for like the past week or so now. He's been shooting terrible. Russ Russ has, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And I, I felt this was that opportunity for Alonzo Ball to go at him. But instead of him going at him, he flat out blew the opportunity, man. And and I get it. Russell, Russell can be a little intimidating on both ends of the floor. Yeah, he he's a little he has that mean streak about him. The way the way Russ carries himself as if he don't have any friends. Like I I don't care. Like this is what I do. Exactly. Yeah, uh-huh. And, and, and my thing, Lonzo Ball was a first round draft pick. Number two pick in the draft. He's now in his second year. I need to see more than three points from my starting point guard, especially if you are playing 35 minutes a game, man. Not to mention that his free throw shoot is horrendous. He's shooting 48% from the line. At one point in the game last night, Laker fans started. At the line, him. yep. At the free yep. throw line. I was like, <laughs> You can't be serious. They're booing him at the free I'm glad line. you said that because right in the middle of my page right now about Lonzo, I'm glad you started out with Lonzo, right in the middle of my first page of notes that I got, and I got it highlighted, Lonzo Ball needs to go. He, he's got to go. I believe he, he he's a good trade asset at this point. Well, you better get, you better I, trade I him now before, before he lose that value. Exactly. And, you know, I can't put all the blame on just Lonzo because of the team. We struggle from the free throw line. We're, we're Shot last. Shot 59% yesterday teams, from the free throw line. We, we have the lowest free throw shooting percentage yep. as a team. So let that sink in. All this raw talent we have, and we have the – it's the simple things. Free throws are simple things. That is something we learn as a youth. That is something we, we try to keep. We play pickup games of 21. You got to knock them down from the three. And you three shoot it from the three at 21. First bucket, three shots in a row. Yeah. I, and we got all this talent, and we can't do the simple things, man. Come on, man. We talking about free throws. Free throws. I'm, I'm right there with you, bro. Like, I, you know, one in three since LeBron has been gone. You know, when KCP is your leading scorer, you know that you're probably in trouble when, uh, you know, when, when he's your leading scorer. 
At, to your point, and he wasn't even and he wasn't starter. even started. To your point, Lon- Lonzo part. Ball, thirty five points. I mean, thirty five minutes, three points, zero for one on uh, on threes. And that one three he had, he had literally all day to shoot it over there in the corner, right by the Lakers bench. So, yep. so you got the enthusiasm of, of your team, you know what? And when he shot that three and missed it, I said that got to be like the worst feeling in sports, not just basketball. When everybody be like, ah, and then they're like, ah. Oh. You know that, that uh, that's exactly. the worst feeling as a, as a, as a player. One for five from the free throw line. This guy shot forty nine percent from the free throw last year. He's shooting forty. Um, he's at a uh, forty forty five this year. Thirty one from three. Forty percent field goal percentage, which is really not good because he's really only taking he's only taking seven to nine shots a game. So the number is going to be skewed because the sample size is small. Uh, this this guy, you know, I said exactly. this last year, man. Uh, Lonzo Ball is not a good player. I watched this guy at UCLA. The same thing I said about Ben Simmons, and so far I've been right. People are still on that hype Ben Simmons train, but Ben Simmons is really not a great, a good basketball player. He can't shoot outside the paint. I think uh, it was a stat last week. He had only took two shots outside the paint all year long and missed both of them. And he hasn't and has a the- three-pointer. How can you respect a guy that hasn't shot a Last year he did ball. the same thing. Ben I think his first three good. that he shot last year was in the playoffs. You know, it, it, Ben Simmons is what he is. He's a he's a great passer. Obviously, he's a great rebounder. But outside of that, he's not much more. They have to bench him in the fourth quarter. Last year in the playoffs, they had to bring in T.J. McConnell to handle the point guard dude because Ben Simmons is not a great ball handler. He just knows what to do with the ball because his ice because his IQ is so so high. The same way I think about Lonzo Ball, his IQ is real high. You watch him play; he knows how to get the ball out. He knows who to get the ball to. He, you know, he he plays defense. He can rebound. He's probably one of the best rebounding point guards in the league. You know, he can, he can pass the ball, but you need to score. I told somebody this last year. I don't care about all that stuff. You need to score on a team that has no scores. Last year he did the same thing, and I just don't get it. Lonzo, I said last year he 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 was a bust. I said when he got drafted he was a bust. And guess what? Seems like I'm go, I'm gonna be right on that bust situation, regardless of what people say. Yeah, and, and I think the thing is, is that we continue to blow our four quarter leads with our LeBron on the floor. Brandon Ingram, to me, is just an okay player. He's not a good player. He's not even close to being a great player right now. He's an okay player. And anyone who disagrees with me, I don't know what games you are watching thinking this guy. You is know a what? Good I think player. he's pressing. And, uh, 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 you know, I watch a lot of Ingram. I think he's a good player. I think he's pressing. And let me tell you why. I think he's pressing because all season long, all we've been been hearing about is before even LeBron got there, before he even signed, before the ink was even on the paper, we were talking about is is they going to trade the late it are the Lakers going to trade Brandon Ingram to get Kawhi? Is they going to trade him to get Paul George, is they going to trade him to get Anthony Davis? He's been hearing these rumors. He's a young guy. You know, he's only been, you know, so for me, I think he's pressing a bit, trying to prove, like, listen, I belong here, and I can play alongside LeBron James, because Kuzma is is the one that's been getting all the love. You know, Kuzma has been the one that people have been saying, him and Hart, that probably Kuzma is going to be the one that'll stay if anybody else stays. Kuzma will be the one, and everybody else is going to be gone. So I think Ingram is pressing a little bit right now. I I, I can see that. I can see that he's pressing because, you know, they brought him in to be, you know, that He's supposed second, to be you know, sec- yeah, he's supposed to be uh, Le- LeBron's second guy. He hasn't been that. So I, I can see the pressing part. And, and, but with Ingram, I know what to expect from him now. Just okay numbers. And when things get rough, I know what he's going to do. He's going to go play hero ball. That's what they did in the fourth quarter. They played hero ball. And Ingram basically took every shot in the fourth quarter. I mean, because he had to. No one else. 8 of 21, 0 for 2 from 3. <laughs> that, that's, that's not very great. And this is not me throwing shade towards him because that's, that's the way the Lakers want to see him play. They want to see him do his individual thing, he should be scoring. But I don't see that in him as a player right now. He needs to grow and develop more. You know, I I agree with that statement. Let me let me make this statement before I make my next point. 
all you real Laker fans, all you Laker fans that's been there since day one, just shut up, okay? Just just shut up because you see what's going on now, how good this team or how good this or how not good this team is without LeBron. All you guys in the all season, all during the season, I still see it now, man. You know, we don't want LeBron. He's this, he's that. Like, have, have do I, I, Laker fan? I'm telling you, man. I've said this before. Laker fans to me is the equivalent of Cowboy fans. You know, they. Oh man, listen. Of man, course, God the mighty Laker fans, Yankee of Yankee course. fans, and Cowboy fans are some of the worst fans in all of sports. You know, because they think that because they won so many titles before that they that 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 they're so that they're just supposed to be good yeah like we don't need lebron james oh you don't that's why you missed the playoffs for the last five years right that's why you that's why you haven't even been close to even doing anything remotely good in the playoffs for a very 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 long time right right you don't need lebron sure, sure you don't because without lebron james you're yeah, the 35 win team last year but but as soon as LeBron brings a championship or take them back to the playoffs, they're going to be all over LeBron. Let him get them. That's, that's what they let do. him get them to the to the Western Conference Finals this year and have to play the Warriors and they battle the Warriors tough. You know, let's say they lose in seven, which I don't think because I'm always going to take LeBron to Game Seven. One game for my life. Give me, give me twenty three, LeBron James. But let's say they, they they lose a close Game Seven. These Laker fans will be riding so much meat. I, I don't. I don't. It, it 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 honestly makes me so mad. And that's why I say I normally will follow LeBron James because obviously I don't have a basketball team. I've, I've never had a basketball team. I just always love LeBron James. That's why I can't be a, a Laker fan this year. I, I, I just can't because I hate the fan base. Because because the, the idiotic statement that 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 their fans, you know, spew out, and it's like y'all haven't been anything. Literally, you've been nothing. It's like they're still living in yes, the past. you've been nothing. They're still living in the past. They're still caring about old. You haven't won a championship since 2010. That was eight years ago. That like like you 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 haven't done anything, you know. But to the game, as I laid out with Ingram and and Ball, 35 minutes for Ball, three points. Josh Hart, 38 minutes, 13 points. He wasn't really any better. One for eight from three. You know, uh, Ingram, 41 minutes, eight of 21, 0 for two for three. You know, combined they were they they were uh one of eleven from three. Those those three guys and Kuz got hurt. Obviously, he he couldn't uh play in the second yeah. half, but he so, played sixteen minutes and he was yeah. only one for four, zero for two for three. So it's yeah, not as so if he did Kuz better. Go ahead. That's what I knew. I was like, I was like, we're done. I, was, I and I and I and I didn't want to accept it because you know our bench came in. And they gave us pretty. They good had a numbers. five point lead they, in the fourth they quarter. The they had a five point lead in the fourth quarter. All the way up until the fourth quarter, and our our starters only outscored our bench by seven points. Like you can't have that. You can't have that. In order to beat a team, yeah. In order to beat a team like OKC, who I consider an elite defensive team, because they run that three two zone, man. That zone is beautiful, and. We need to score at least 20 points, man. Like, our bench, our bench cannot, you know, be on the same level as our starters. Our starters need to score at least 20 more points than our bench to beat a team like OKC. Not seven. Seven points is not going to get the job done, especially when we got people like Ivan Zubak. He was probably the best player for the Lakers last night. I was going to bring that up. I wrote that in my notes as well. He was probably the best player for the Lakers last night. When I was looking last night, I said, that guy right there probably should be getting more minutes. Because I think, because I, oh, I just think oh, he's a better sure. scoring option than Tyson Chandler or JaVale McGee. You know, I, JaVale McGee and Tyson Chandler, they, they, they provide the defense. That's what they're there for, to provide the defense, those hustle minutes. But, you know, Zubik is, it, uh, I'm, uh, he's just the best player. On the court last night, to me, to your to your OKC point, they are a great defensive team. Russ, probably the the, the the best, as he said the other day, the best defending point guard at his position, uh, uh, defender at his position. Uh, Paul George, we already know what he does defensively. Uh, they they oh yeah, Paul George, he always wants to lock yeah. up. You know the the team's best player. Stephen so Adams, we know I, what he I brings. Pass off to Paul George. Tough defense and and, and, and rebounds. They they can bring uh Nerlens Noel off the bench. Defense. You know, they they are this is a uh 
Schroeder off the bench. Defense. This that that's a very good defensive team. And the Lakers, I I I know they'll be okay whenever LeBron gets back because I I'm just a believer that LeBron's kind of solve all. But this is not a very good team. Uh, this this Lakers team. They're not. They remind me of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah. That's what they remind me just, of. It's just the a, Cleveland Cavaliers all over. Just a younger there, version. We're in LA, so we can yeah, deal with Yeah, just a younger it. version, you know. Uh, this team won 35 games last year. That's, that, that's not a really good team. But uh, that's not a really good. Go ahead. You know, that's not, that's not, that's not a really good, you know, 35 games. The Cavaliers are going to win 35 games this year, probably. You know, uh, we fell to the AC last night, and I told I, I said this. I said, if we don't win some of these games that we should win, we can easily fall to that that 14 seed out there in the West because it's so tight. The, the West is a whole nother beast. It's not like the East. The West is a whole nother beast. And we fell to the AC last night. And we're about to play ourselves out the playoffs if LeBron. Yeah, it, 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 if, and now I hear he's supposed to be back in the next uh, two or three games. He's already practicing. He's already getting some shots up. He's already doing his thing at practice a little bit. They, you know, they but with a groin injury, I've had one of those before. And those are one of the injuries that 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 you cannot yeah, you, never you know, can't man. rush it back. It's, you know, you you, you may feel day, good one day so. and you get out there and you make one wrong move and that groin pops. And if it if it pops, pops and he, he tears it, uh and I've told I I've, I've tore my groin before playing baseball. That is not a good feeling. You cannot lay down on your back. You cannot lay down on your stomach. You cannot sit down in a chair. You 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 basically can't even breathe because every single movement that you that you do is gonna is gonna hurt. And a guy like LeBron James, where a lot of where, where his game is predicated upon being physical, you know, I I don't think he need to rush it back. I still think they got time because I still think even uh uh that 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 Western Conference it, it it's. It's a juggernaut, it, and it, it and it, it's it's better than the East, but there's a lot of overrated teams in in the West. They're just good regular season wise, or or they just having a good season right now. But there's a lot of overrated teams in, in the West. You know, outside of the the real top, you know, the the, the West is just normal. Uh, but uh, if if LeBron don't agree. get back soon, they can't get too far out of the playoffs race. Uh, or it's going to be tough sledding. To your point, it's not the East. So at that point, it's gonna at be that tough. point, it is going to be tough. It, and I don't want LeBron to rush it back. I don't want him to rush it back. You know, and not heal his injury all the way because the Lakers are painful in the fourth to yeah, watch it's it's tough. Him. And for and for him to get hurt again, and me have to watch the Lakers without him. It yeah, that'd be, be bro. That would crush. Yeah, that'd be tough. Season. That'd definitely be like, tough. That'd definitely be, be, be tough for sure. Uh, but uh, replays and 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 uh, sports, we hear it all the time. We hear the announcers in the NBA. We hear the the broadcasters uh in the NFL. You know, even baseball now is starting to get. You know, they they got challenges and all that other stuff. Uh, do you like the replay system? Do you think it's ruining sports? Do you or 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 do you like it? I, I believe in key moments, replays are necessary. But I don't want the replay to stop the progression of a game. And I think if we're going to get something right, we should try to get everything right. But that would slow the game down so much and make it so boring. So I think there should be, like, challenge flags. I like what the NFL does. They do, they do challenge flags in a they challenge like key, yep. key things, you know, touchdowns, touchdowns and turnovers are automatic review. And then, and then they get the coaches yep. challenge flags. So, I, and I, I believe it should be that way in the NBA. You feel like you got, you know, wrong. Baseball do that as well. Baseball, baseball as well. They, 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 they give the coach, you know, a challenge, you know, instead of, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I believe that's what it should do. But and the NBA, like the game last night, Tyson Chandler, Full on, not one of the Oklahoma City players out. He went for the ball. And, he hit the ball first. They managed to hit the dude. Yeah, he got face. all ball. That was all. They ball. went to the replay. That was all booth. ball. Yeah, it yeah. was all ball. They went to the replay booth, looked at this foul, 
and I still got it wrong. And still got it wrong. It still got it wrong. That's what I'm saying. It was common sense, I thought, for everyone sitting in that, you know, that building and watching on TV, that, hey, he went for all ball first. He hit the ball. The man just happened to get hit in the face. Yeah, I don't uh... – I don't see that as a flagrant foul. And then for you to the re- replay review it and still get the call wrong, that's that's just I just think that's the and then you just stop the game. I just play. think that's the, the the day and age that we live in, honestly, bro, where everything everything gets gets looked at. We in so much of a PC community, man, that every single time somebody gets fouled hard, it's gonna be a flagrant. And from the from first glance, I can I guess I can see why they why they took a look at it because first glance, um, first glance I said, dang, he hit him hard. But then, yeah, that's like, my thing like, too. God, dang, he hit him hard. But then when they go show the replay, and this is what the referee, I'm pretty sure the referee gets the same angles that we get on TV. I'm sure they get better angles. They even got somebody talking to them Cause, in their ear. Because the first angle, right? The first angle they showed last night. Yeah, yeah, that first like, angle was tough. Like, that first angle was tough. But the second angle, I was like, man. Yeah, he clearly, he clearly, oh, clearly hit all ball. And from the follow through, he hit him in the face. And I don't know how you a referee and you go to the monitor and you look at that and you can still say, yeah, that's a flagrant foul instead of just a common foul, knowing that he hit the ball first. Because a flagrant foul, I thought, the, the def- by definition, is unnecessary contact. You know, uh, you know, yeah, not, yeah, not, not, yeah. Movement. He was that clearly was going, he, yeah, he was clearly going movement. for the ball because he hit the ball. So I don't, I don't see how how you you go look at that and then you still come back and say, yeah, that's a flagrant foul right there at a critical point in the game right there. You know, that was that was two shots and, and the ball. Remember before going into uh, before going into the uh, to the half or was it the end of the first quarter? But anyway, so no, 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 no. Uh, that was. Someone that was in the fourth Oklahoma quarter City late. Bench. You know, that was a that was a critical moment in that game. And to give them two yeah, shots and the ball, in the two game. shots and the ball for a, a, a play that was clearly a a a common foul, Lord have mercy. I, I just don't understand what they're doing when they go look at these replays. I think just because they, they already have it in their mind, yeah, we're just going to call it flagrant anyway. So we're just going to go over here. We're going to waste a bunch of time over here at, at, at this monitor looking at a play that really don't matter that from the first two seconds after you look at that second angle, you clearly see it was the ball. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, man. I don't know what you're supposed to do. And even on, like, some of the, you know, tip passes and stuff like that, you can, we can clearly see from home it went off this player. But they'll still call it on the other team. Say, hey, it's their yep. ball. I'm like, come on, I, I don't... man. That ball clearly went off of so-and-so. So why are we giving the other team the ball? That's 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 the way and, of sports, like, man. They can't review those things. But they can review, you know, stuff that they, they like reviewing. It's just whatever they feel like reviewing. Nah, really. nah, it, nah it, they'd rather put it in the two-minute report uh, after the game saying, yeah, this should have been called or this shouldn't have been called. When when teams have, have already lost, exactly. When teams have already yeah, lost, it as if matter it matters. Then. Yeah. Like, what, what good is that now? Yeah, it make it makes absolutely uh, no sense to me. Uh, but we're gonna move to the uh, college rings. We got a national championship game coming up on Monday, and I think it's gonna be a really good a really good game. Since the start of the the college football playoff, there has not been a undefeated team that won the championship. So, with that being said, we obviously are going to get an undefeated team this time. Obviously, Clemson is 14 and 0. Alabama is 14 and 0. The game is on Monday, ESPN, 6 o'clock Mountain Time. That's 8 Eastern, 7. Are you Pacific Time, right? Yeah, Pacific Time. 7 Pacific Time. Um, who you got, man? Alabama, Clemson, number one, number two, been the best teams all year. So, it's, it's two people I never bet, bet against anymore. Bill Belichick is one of them. And the second one is Nick Saban. So I'm not going to bet against Nick Saban in this game, man. Just because I know the kind of talent he has on his side, the amount of firepower he has on his side, the way Tua is playing, the way his defense is playing, I'm not going to count them out this game. I got them winning this game clear. Um, For me, Clemson, if they're going to win this game, it's going to take pressuring Tua if they're going to have to blitz them every down. They're going to have to get pressure on them and, and expose them. That's the only way. Georgia did it, you know, for three quarters. 
So if they can do that, that's their key to winning this game. But I got Alabama, man. Who you got on this one? I got Alabama as well, but I this 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 is not going to be a a a game like people think it's going to be. This is not just going to be Alabama the best team. They're just going to r- win it in a route. If you have not watched this Clemson team play football, if your first game watching them was the Notre Dame game, that don't even do them any justice. You know, you you would have had to see this team perform all year long and look at the transformation that they've had from Kelly Bryant to start the season to, to, to Trevor Lawrence since he got in, uh, uh, implemented into this offense. This kid, Trevor Lawrence, can sling it. Say again? Trevor Lawrence quarterback rating is the, like the second highest. Like, yeah, this guy, this guy can sling it, man. You, when we're talking about a true freshman, this guy can sling it. And, and I know I, I came on here. 